in all your graduation oh activities. i know thank you yeah i'll be bali i mean i'm just planning maybe i'll lose oh, like 50 gosh. pounds trying that's what there I'm you go well. good plan Oh, I'm I can't gonna, imagine. I'm not going to go eat. Yes. 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 All right. Yes. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Good to see you. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, for it's morning for one more minute, Jamie. One more minute. Yeah. <laughs> one, more minute. one more minute. Oh my gosh! And, yes. I, and I believe it's May 11th. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is my audio a little funny? I'm okay. Okay. I was hearing some feedback. Okay. I got the thumbs up. Well, we'll give it one more minute. I know it's a busy day. I mean, every day is busy in our schools, but I think we have the awards assembly today, right? Can so, you hear me? I can hear you, Laura. Yes. Finally. <laughs> yeah. You figured it out. Yes. <laughs> your, son, your son figured it My out. My son did it, yes. <laughs> That is good. And I'm sorry if I look a little sleepy. I was in um, Colorado for work and I got home. My flight was delayed and delayed and delayed. And I made it home last night at 2 a.m. So this is a quick turnaround. At least you made it home. At least I made it home. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Dr. Waller, you look so nice for the, your assembly this afternoon. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm ready to go. Okay. <laughs> awesome. You have two. Are we doing two back to back today? Is that how that works? Yeah, we're doing ninth and 10th and then 11th and 12th. And then a lot of the senior awards are the evening one, you know, the virtual one, but yes. Okay. We did them in the, in the afternoon this year because of AP testing. That was the least amount of AP testing going on this afternoon. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, good. Well, I know we have a lot of things to cover, so let's go ahead and get started, and we might have a few more folks joining us. Um, Theo will not be here. Her husband is competing in a big tennis tournament down in Atlanta, so she is there supporting him, um, but Jamie's going to do the report for us. Um, so welcome, everyone. It is the last PTO meeting of the school year. How did this happen? How is it May 11th? I don't know. But, you know, as kids get, at least my kids, as they get older and older, time just seems to fly by. And here we are already. So um, thank you for being here. Let's go ahead and get started with Allison Couch on the superintendent's report. Sure. Um, and then I will probably, I'll have to slide out. So it's teacher appreciation week. Um, and so we are, there are different activities um, and things going on in each building. So um, as district administrators, we are doing ice cream Sundays at lunch each day in each different building. So we are at Lang. So this is, I'm in, uh, I'm in Mrs. Anderson's room right now. So um, quick um, construction update. Um, so we are a couple weeks um, pushed back um, from the, the last update. That has to do with the water detention system and ordering it and getting it in, which is required by Oakwood City. Right now, we anticipate um, the date of occupancy would be around between that January 11th, um, January 17th date. Um, other than that, everything seems to be moving pretty smoothly with all of that. Um, we have had some memorial trees that we've had to move and work through and work with families and get those um, with that addition. Um, we are flipping phases. If you know some of that work with the Oakwood Schools Foundation, it was originally the um, 
the arts addition, and then we were looking at the arts enhancement with the visual arts and then the auditorium. We're actually flipping those two phases and we're starting with the auditorium just because we have some interest generated around that. I say we like it's me, it's Oakwood Schools Foundation. It's not me, but anyway. Um, so we're gonna look at moving forward with the auditorium. Um, Dr. Waller and Mr. Badenhoff are, will be meeting with a small group, Richley Architects, Mr. Eaton, um, just on um, updating that. The last, um, I'll say the, the last quotes we received were from 2018. So a lot in five years, um, a lot of inflation also. So we need updated costs. So that's the next step um, on that. But it's just all the end of year activities, the awards pieces this afternoon. There was the success breakfast yesterday. You have Grand Affair tonight at Harmon. It's just that time of year. Um, so, so as the interim, thank you for always including me and allowing me to join. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you and everything that you've been doing, juggling a lot of hats. Um, and I'm sure you'll be happy when Dr. Gupta <laughs> signs on and takes away a few of those, a few of those responsibilities. So Amen. good. Okay. Well, we have our high school principals report up next with Dr. Waller. <clears throat> yeah. Um, want to thank, uh, all the volunteers and PTO for a wonderful after prom. That was, a a fun event out, you know, prom went really well today in Art Institute. It seemed like the kids had a lot of fun. And then after prom this weekend was um, was excellent too. Um, seemed like we had record turnout on both the dance and after prom and the prizes uh, goes till two in the morning. And uh, we had a huge amount of kids waiting for those final big prizes at the end. And all the moms and dads that volunteered with the prizes, the food, the the prep ahead of time. It, it's its a huge undertaking uh, and a big thanks to Stephanie O'Hara. She kind of led that, led that. And um, we really appreciate all the work that she did. It went off really well, keeps our kids safe, which is why we do after prom. Um, uh, we have, um, and again, thanks for all the staff appreciation celebrations across the district. We appreciate that as well. Um, we have our awards program this afternoon. Um, we'll be having our, our senior awards program. That's going to be, uh, that'll be virtual and that'll stay on our website for anybody that misses that. Um, we have uh, the um, uh, college uh, photo and cookout on the front lawn on May 16th. So just a reminder, kids can make their They'll be making their signs in homeroom, or sometimes you can buy them on Amazon or whatever you want to do. Kids also put down taking a gap year or born in the military or whatever they want. That's it's their celebration. Uh, and then we cook. I'll be cooking hot dogs. Uh, we're actually uh, for that the uh, student council um, uh, is moving their lunch to the kind of the last fun day that we're having. Um, with senior service. And then I'm just cooking out hot dogs for the senior picture day. So uh, they're still gonna get fed, um, but we're gonna just kind of have hot dogs and cookies and chips and stuff like that. So um, we're kind of wrapping up AP exams. Um, we're still gonna do, um, we have, I know we have a committee working on the uh, senior signs that'll be on display on Schaefer. So, we thank you for all that. And the parade will be at uh, May 26th uh, for seniors uh, that want to participate. Um, line up at Lane Stadium at six o'clock. Um, if anybody wants to show up like around 530 and help out with that, that would be fine. Or just enjoy the parade. It kind of goes down Schaefer, makes a U-turn at one point and then comes back towards the high school and then ends in front of the uh, stadium and Tracy will be putting out we'll be putting out the exact parade route but it should be the same as as last year so that's always a fun day kids should wear you know their cap and gown they should uh, decorate their car throw candy if they want whatever they want to do um, just make sure you have an adult driving um, baccalaureates on the 28th 
Um, we're going to have our um, group picture will be taken at uh, six o'clock and the service starts at 630 there. Uh, Memorial Day is the 29th and then commencement is University of Dayton. Um, and that will begin at seven o'clock that evening. We'll have rehearsal that day also at 1.30. Uh, sometimes kids ask, do they have to be at rehearsal? Yes, they have to be at rehearsal. That's a required. That's actually considered part of their school day. That's how we can kind of let them out early by, you know, still having them come and do some of these other things and including the, the service days. So um, I think uh, that's pretty much it. Um, all of this stuff is on the class of 2023 Google Classroom. It should be on the school website, newsletters, Twitter, all those things. So uh, it's going to be a fun end of the year. And uh, it's been uh, it's been a great year and it has really gone fast. That's probably because I'm getting older, too. But uh, it has gone really fast. Yes. Well, thank you. There's so many we have so many great things to look forward to. And I think, you know, as much of, of a pain as COVID was, I think that the senior parade and the senior signs. Right. Didn't we start those during. COVID? Yeah. yeah, it's become such a nice tradition now I, agree. So I guess yeah. that's one of the positives you know sure. that, that have come out of that um so does anyone I forgot to ask does anyone have any questions for either Allison Couch or Paul Waller before we move on to the junior high report okay we're good okay Mr. Badenhop you're up next then please uh, I'll start by echoing what Dr. Waller said. Just thank you for all the support. It feels like we just met not too long ago, but then you look back and it's it's been a couple months already and a lot has happened during that time. Um, but even in the last couple of weeks to have the support this week for the success breakfast, wouldn't have been able to pull that off without Sharon Neumeister and Laura Wasty and certainly Don Rockner as well. Uh, but that was again, a great event and one of my favorite events each semester. Uh, the bagels the other morning. I think we have desserts tomorrow. And then also next week for our award ceremony, a PTO is helping out with their refreshment stand there as well. So we really appreciate the partnership. And I think it's been appreciated by our staff as well. Um, regarding the upcoming events, I think everything that's on the on the agenda looks correct to me. And there are a lot of things that have happened recently or are happening soon. Um, you might remember also from COVID, we'd been virtual with our awards for the last few years, and we brought that back in person this year, kind of working out some bumps there, uh, to be honest, because we we talked about the time earlier in the year and went with the 630 kind of halfway between, but we'll have Power the Pen State Competition. All of those students will be gone next week, and if we win our first round baseball tournament game on Tuesday, then those students will be gone as well. So those are some things to think about in the future that, you know, how, I don't think there's such thing as a perfect date in May uh, to have that because we, we also have concerts the next week and exams the week after that, but trying to find kind of that sweet spot for recognizing students and making sure that as many as want to be there can be there um, are some things that we have to focus on for the future. Um, we also have the junior high challenge day coming up. So if you have a junior high student, uh, particularly a seventh grader who wouldn't have experienced it last year, that's just a really, it's a fun day, but it's a competitive day. And I think students really get into that uh, within their advisory groups. So looking forward to that for next Friday as well. Um, but it's, it's that time of year. It's very busy. It's been nice to see many of you at different events, even over the last couple of weeks. Um, I think with Elizabeth, we worked out a little bit of a pie guarding situation at the cherry pie concert <laughs> to make sure that all the pie was still there and that she got to listen to her kids play. But um, thank you so much for doing that. Thank yeah, you. You know, I kind of hesitated a little bit to put our service staff in charge of that, but I figured if we had enough of them there, they would kind of keep each other from <laughs> digging in before <laughs> the concert was finished. Uh, but that was that was just a really nice event to hear some of our seniors play who, you know, I heard them in junior high and now here they are getting ready to graduate and move on. It's just, it's a really rewarding thing to see that progression over time. That's great. Oh, I did. Uh, I wanted to share too and see... Yeah, if I can share the preview, let's see. Is that popping up okay? Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Thank so you. So this is from this is from yesterday inside what will be the choir room. Um, you see the windows there. Um, obviously, the finishing part you won't see cinder block. The exterior will be brick, and then inside that will be 
um, I think plastered. This is looking through a door that'll go into the choir room office. So you see it's kind of a narrower space there. Uh, this will be the office between the choir room and the orchestra room. And this kind of takes a different look at that. Uh, but the way they'll be oriented up against the library will be the choir room. And then the orchestra room will be after these offices. And then the band room will be after an additional office and some storage space. Uh, so really starting to see a lot of visible progress uh, right now. And to be in the construction meetings, like there are those little things that come up that we're trying to work through. And Allison mentioned the uh, water detention system. I love that it's called a detention system. It almost sounds like a, an extension of our uh, restorative practices slash consequences as needed. But, um, you know, those have been things that it's been neat to see how that's coming together and just looking forward to when that opens up. Probably I'm ballparking like winter breakish next year is, would be the target if everything goes smoothly from here on out. Um, our delays kind of stop being a problem once everything's dried in, or at least for the most part, but it's looking like that'll happen sometime late summer toward the beginning of school that it'll be, you know, either at the beginning or shortly thereafter um, be dried in. And then we have a lot more predictability with the site and just decreased chance of delays moving forward after that. So uh, if there are any other questions, I'll stop the share. Um, any other questions for me or on construction? I So the awards assembly, I know you're work. You're working it out. Are you? Will it still be that day? And will it'll still be that day. It's kind of okay. like for this year. I think it kind of is what it is with the planning um, okay. stages. And again, I don't know that there will ever be such thing as the perfect day. If we find that, we'll let you know. But um, it's just something that we'll keep in our planning for next year. That if we can avoid power of the pen is something that most years we're going to have students who are going to make it to the state level. So if they have their tournament dates posted early enough to try to be able to plan around that. Um, but as you all know, the auditorium is in very high demand this time of year. So it's kind of finding a date, although we get a little bit of a choice in picking. I want to put students first, too, with having the concert nights and the other things that we have uh, throughout the month of May in the auditorium. Got it. OK. OK, great. Well, thank you. Let's move on to Mrs. Owens. Hi, everybody. Um, Basically, I can boil ours down to scheduling, scholarships, and scores. Um, trying to get that schedule finalized. Um, it, it's a it, it's a big task, um, but we are working through it. And those kiddos will have their schedules by the end of the year. And a couple of kids asked me yesterday, so when will we get our draft of our schedules? I go, oh, no, honey, it, it's, it's your schedule. It's not the draft. We, we're past that. Um, scholarships, we are, you know, the, the committees are meeting, um, the results are coming in, <clears throat> we're getting that together for the senior awards night, and then the scores are the APs, we don't have the scores yet, that'll be in the, the summer, but, um, just checked with Mrs. I have to give a shout out to Mrs. Lumpkins, because she puts, she really coordinates all of that, and it is, um, she does a, a fantastic job. That is really in her wheelhouse, the organization and the and the coordinating of all of that. Um, we um, have kids have taken 707 exams this year. Um, last year, 583. So, yeah, so it's been a lot. We do have some makeup exams <clears throat> yet next week, but um, I'm sure they are tired and ready for these APs to be over. God love their little souls. But um, so that's what we've been up to. Wow. That's, is that increase? Did we add that because we have another AP class? No, that's just, we don't. That's just more students. We okay. didn't add. We, you know, I had a couple, we had a couple take um, AP exams and classes we don't even offer. They studied on their own. Um, but yeah, we had, uh, 707 and I didn't go back any further than that. I had to, I forgot my username, forgot my password, how to get all that taken care of. And, and we do have English AP seminar, which is new. So, oh, that is oh, right. I'm sorry. Thank you, Dr. Waller. That's right. Yeah. But I don't think wow. it, it, it's the, it's the reason for all of that, but yes, you are right. We did have AP, um, English seminar. So <clears throat> it's a lot wow. of testing going on. A lot of testing. Oh. Yep. But okay, you all are doing so much. Thank you. Our um, kids are just our kids are rocking this. They really are. And Mrs. Lumpkins has done a really great job of coordinating it too. That's great. 
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Um, okay, so Jamie, let me put the budget in the chat here and Jamie's going to present. Okay, doc. Um, I am presenting for COGRIT and I'm basically just going to be um, just reading some highlights that she provided me. So as of May 9th, we have $18,811 in the bank. We plan. We have planned to spend an additional three thousand seven hundred and forty-one for the remainder of the year. Some items such as senior signs, freshman challenge, muse machine have not been requested yet. So please uh, let Theo know if these funds are needed, and I'm sure she will follow up with those um, committee chairs, etc. Um, number three, we are planning on having $15,069 uh, or so in the account at the end of this school year. Incoming funds for April and May to date have been Kroger and Amazon Smiles uh, for $377.78 to be exact. Amazon is eliminating this, eliminating this program, but Kroger has been doing very well. <laughs> she says, I guess that's the only positive of higher grocery prices. So that's great. Um, and we'll continue to promote the um, DLM and Kroger uh, rewards programs. Um, so expenses for April and May to date have been after prom for $500, Girl Talk for $193, um, Harmon Destination Imagination Donation, of, we gave $100 and the President's Fund of 96 and 75. Um, I would welcome questions, but I probably wouldn't be able to answer them. So I can try uh, with Emma and the other exec me, uh, committee members, but I might um, turp your questions to Theo. Does anybody have any questions? Or anything else to add, Emma? No, you did a great job. Thank you. I'm a good reader. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, and I forgot to ask if anyone has any questions for Mrs. Owens. So, anyone? Are we good? Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so sorry that I have so many things here to talk about, but it's that time of year when we're transitioning to next year and thinking ahead. Um, but before we do that, I just want to mention that we are up and running with social media. So the PTO now has an Instagram page and a Facebook page. Um, thank you to Laura for working on that with Ashley. Ashley's last name, Talman, Ashley Talman. Yeah, and uh, so she's awesome. So like our page, spread the word. So we can, we had to start all, we had to start over again with our PTO um, Facebook page. We had won many, many years ago and we could not figure out for the life of us who started it and we couldn't get access to it. Um, so we started over again. And so we're just building um, that community back up. So please you know, spread the word. Um, okay. And then we have a lot of April and May PTO sponsored events. A lot of them were mentioned. I just wanted to give a shout out to after prom, Stephanie O'Hara, as Dr. Waller mentioned, senior breakfast is Allie Davis, Kelly Hick, and Kelly Plyman. Thank you to those folks. Junior high success breakfast, as Mr. Badenhop mentioned, Laura Wasty and Sharon Neumeister. Junior high awards assembly, Erica Curran. Teacher appreciation has been headed up all year, but they do their final their final big thank you um, this week, Sue Usachek and Mackenzie Whitmer. We have one more newsletter going out whenever I can get that together, <laughs> which will be in the next week or two. And Harrison Gowdy will be doing that for us. And Senior Signs, Stephanie O'Hara is chairing that with Tracy Williams helping her. So thank you to all the folks uh, PTO folks who are doing all those things over um, or have done them over the last few weeks and we'll be doing them coming up. So lots of things happening in the schools and with the PTO supporting the schools. And if I missed anyone, I apologize, but that's that's what I think. Um, okay, this is really exciting. We have, so every year for the last 
several years, I don't know how many, before I came on, we give a volunteer award recognition. It's a PTO recognition and it's called the Bev Johnson PTO Volunteer Award. Um, and we talk about it on the exec and it's given to someone whose last child is graduating from the Oakwood schools and someone who has been very involved um, in helping the PTO in a variety of different ways. And so this year we actually decided that we had two people that we wanted to give the award to. And so we decided that we're going to give it to both because why not, right? They're both, they're both worthy of it. So um, we're giving the Bev Johnson PTO Volunteer Award to Harrison Gowdy and Carrie Lennart. And let me, or Leonard, I think it's Leonard. So sorry, Carrie. Um, okay, let me, I was gonna put a, I have this picture. So we gave them their award and we invited them to come, but they both work and couldn't make it. And so I have this nice picture of them that Tracy's going to be posting. Can you see that? Hopefully in the chat, I put it in the chat. Um, okay. And I just wanted to tell you why they're getting the award. So, okay. We have the carries. Carrie has served on the PTO board since 2017 and 2018 school year. So it's six years. She's been in the same role as volunteer coordinator for both senior and junior high during this time. She says, this role has been perfect for me as someone who wanted to be involved in some capacity, but work full time and would be challenged to meet frequently or do things during the school day. While she anticipated it mostly being a transactional technical role and sending out emails, it became more and provided an opportunity to interact and connect with many other PTO members, teachers, and parents, volunteers, and even students who she never would have met had she not been in this role. This year marks her last year as her baby, as she says, Cami Dan graduates and joins, joins her older brother, Nick Dan, class of 21, and me, Carrie, class of 91, as Oakwood High School alumni. So thank you to Carrie for everything she has done being our volunteer coordinator. Um, and then we have Harrison Gowdy, who has been volunteering for many years with our PTO. She volunteered for several years as the chairperson for the junior high success breakfast. And then she went on to coordinate our PTO newsletter. Harrison says she appreciated having a volunteer opportunity with PTO that allowed her to work on her on her own schedule since daytime commitments were not an option. The newsletter is sent out four times a year and it involves coordinating with several PTO members for stories and photos. And Harrison and her husband have two daughters, Elliot, who's who graduated in 2019 and Emery is graduating this May. So, Thank you. I know they're not here, but just I hope their ears are burning or ringing and they hear us thanking them. Um, and they did receive this nice, lovely award. So, okay. Um, and we'll be giving a shout out on social media. Like I said, Tracy will too. So moving on, let's see. We have our 2023-2024 PTO Executive board proposal. And let's see if I can put that in the chat here. Oh, and I'm really excited um, because all of our board members are staying on. Hooray, which is awesome. Um, and we have added another board member. Well, our, our vice president will be Suzanne Donnelly. Um, so Suzanne is great. She's been involved in a variety of different ways. Well, I should say it's Suzanne, as long as we all agree, as long as we vote on it, <laughs> right? Um, and so here's who we have as our proposal. Um, we have Laura Weaver as our president, Vice President Suzanne Donnelly, Recording Secretary will be Elizabeth Ludwig, our treasurer slash store rewards, Theo Rich, Corresponding Secretary Amanda Robb, membership chair, Jamie Mahaskar, and I'll stay on as past president. So I would like to 
put forward a vote? Could somebody, um, I don't even know, I can't remember. Uh, Jamie, how do we do this in OSF? <laughs> somebody uh, um, agree. Make a, mo make make a, a motion. motion. Yeah, make a and motion. Then Yes. Okay. So would somebody make a motion to approve this proposed PTO executive board for 23-24? Okay. Thank you. And does someone second the motion? I'll second. Thank you. And if you agree, could you raise your hand, give a thumbs up? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And does anyone not agree or have an issue with it in any way, let me know. Okay, um, we got a thumbs up in the chat. Awesome, okay, well, great, well, thank you. Okay, so that will be our PTO executive board for next year, so that's really exciting. Thank you, everyone. Um, okay, moving on, we have our meeting schedule. I wanted to bring this up because I, goofed a little bit. Well, I didn't realize that the high school does department meetings um, on, I can't remember, what is it? The second, um, what is it, Dr. Wall? Anyway, you do department meetings on, I think it's the second Thursday of the month. Um, and so I wanted to, I'm putting this in the chat. I wanted to propose that next year, we have these dates and if you all can check on it, um, but we had September, okay, department chairs every other Thursday throughout the year, thank you. Okay, so I had proposed September 7th. I'd like to change that to September 14th, if that works for you all. And then keep November 9th, keep January 11th. And I had proposed March 7th and we need to change that to March 14th and then May 9th. So could you all just look that over, um, you know, especially Mr. Badenhop and Dr. Waller, Mrs. Owens, and I'll send that to the superintendent office and we could just see if those will work. I mean, sticking with the same schedule, but just shifting those two. Okay, Dr. Waller's nodding yes. So I'm assuming, yeah, hopefully that's okay. Thumbs up, yeah. Yeah, that that works. Okay, thank you. And I know, Mr. Badenhop, you said you know the new superintendent. We don't know for sure, but we'll try to try to go forward with that if we can. In terms of oh, in terms of his availability. Yeah, I think you said you know just it's hard to know exactly what meeting schedule he'll have and what he'll want you all to be doing. And but we'll you know we'll try to stick with this if we can, and then we'll shift if good. needed. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Thank you so much. That had been on my agenda and I just wanted to get that, get that. Thanks for making those adjustments. Yeah, thank you. I didn't realize how that works. Um, so, okay, committee needs. We are in really awesome shape for our committee needs for next year. There's been a lot of work behind the scenes um, with folks. So um, we have just a few and I wanted to put a shout out and just let me know if you're interested or please spread the word. Um, we have our chairs are all set for our director committee, hooray, but we can always use extra help with that. So please, if you're interested in the director directory committee, we'd love to have you. Um, we have some behind the scenes work with teacher appreciation. We don't, our same chairs are not going to be able to to stick around as teacher appreciation. So we do need some help with that committee. I think we have someone who's willing to chair, but she's thinking about it. Um, but if you're interested, please let me know um, if, if you'd like to be involved in teacher appreciation. We do need a chair for conference dinner. So let me know if you're interested in that. And then Margo Hadley is staying on as our holiday luncheon chair, but she is losing many of her volunteers. So if you'd like to be involved in helping Margo with the um, holiday luncheon, that, that's a great opportunity to get involved. So spread the word. We would love, yeah, thank you, Jamie. Directory committee works over summer and early school year, and then it's done. And we have someone to distribute the directories. We just need some workers kind of behind the scenes. 
So any questions about the committees for next year and PTO exec, did I mention all, did I get them all? We're good, okay. Okay, so spread the word, we'll put that out there. Okay, as far as volunteer recognition, um, I wanted to recognize Darcy Plunkett because she's our past president and she's rolling off. Um, and she's not here because she is moving her son back home after his first year in college. Um, but she's been an incredible member of our PTO community. She's been really helpful for me throughout this year. Um, and she's been really involved, even though she doesn't even have a son or a child at Oakwood anymore. Um, but she's just awesome. And so I just wanted to thank her for everything she's done over the years with the PTO. Um, and then I wanted to thank the rest of my PTO executive board, um, Theo and Jamie and Amanda and Laura and Elizabeth. It, you, are, you all are such a talented and dedicated group. It's been such a great year supporting one another. Um, and there's just so much they do behind the scenes to keep everything running. Um, and I'm, I'm really grateful. Um, and then our PTO chairs are awesome. I'm gonna just put this in the chat and um, just wanted to, there's so many, um, but they, and I've been trying to recognize them throughout the year. Um, but those are our committee chairs. And just if you see these folks, you know, give them a big shout out because they use their own time to support everything in the school. So thank you very much. Um, okay, let's move on to, are there any other PTO updates that I'm missing? We're good, Laura, we're, okay, okay. So let's talk about, we had one in the no question and then two, I just called them circle back because they were things that had been brought up and there were some folks that said, hey, what's the latest on that? So I thought this would be an opportunity to kind of get the latest. Um, so let's talk about the honor roll and let me um, try to summarize where this is, where this is coming from. So we have had several parents, you know, as you know, when we have our exec meetings, we, we uh, talk about, you know, what are the things that we're hearing in the community? Are there, are there any concerns or questions that parents have that we need to bring up at the next PTO meeting because we have this awesome opportunity to meet as a group and hear for our, from our administrators? Um, and so we had several parents reach out to different executive committee members to ask us if we could bring up the honor roll. And specifically, I think it was making it so public in the Oakwood Register and just ask the question of whether or not it is harmful to our students or beneficial to continue to make it public. And I, the concern is a mental health issue and a privacy concern. Um, the points that were brought up to me, um, or not to me, but to that we talked about that our exec committee group, what they were hearing is that it could possibly be creating unnecessary stress and pressure for students to have something like that so public, um, that the students and parents are not only looking for their names, but looking for whether or not their friends are recognized on the honor roll. Parents are looking, you know, I've even had, I was thinking about it, I've had pictures taken and sent to me. And it's it's meant in people say, oh, you know, congrats, you know, your kids on the honor roll, but it also is a little bit, okay, that makes sense. They're they're looking for other people's kids as well. Um a lot of uh, as we know, we have so many talented students at Oakwood, especially when it comes to um, being on the honor roll. So we have a lot of, I don't know what percentage it is of our students who are on the honor roll. I'm sure you all know, but it ends up being that a small group of students tend to not be on the honor roll and it's embarrassing for them potentially. And it makes the students, um, feel, feel poorly about themselves. Um, someone else also brought up the fact that it doesn't take into account the circumstances that students are dealing with and why they might not be on the honor roll. The rigor of their classes, for example, don't come into play. Whether or not um, students are struggling at home, maybe they 
have a parent who has a health issue. Maybe they have a part-time job. Maybe they have a learning difference, right? So there are just circumstances that come into play and maybe that's why they're not on the honor roll. Um, someone else already also said that the honor roll is, or high GPA in our school system is recognized in a number of different ways already. So it's not that it shouldn't be recognized, it's just it's recognized many different ways. For example, the assembly that's happening this afternoon, I'm assuming recognizing recognizes the students on the honor roll. Um, scholar athlete awards that we give recognize honor roll. The cum laude awards that we give recognize students who are students who have a high GPA. So it's just that it's the same recognition is being given many different times. Um, other schools are making the choice to eliminate it, someone said. And so it does seem to be something that is happening out there um, in other school communities that they're looking at this and looking at the pressure that it that it causes. Um, and then the last thing was when this was brought to my attention and I was thinking about it because I do see the positives, but I also see the negatives. I was reflecting on the what made Maddie run parent and student group that we had in the fall, um, which is about a student who died by suicide because of the pressure um, that she was feeling. Um, and you know, I'm sure a lot of other factors, but we asked our students in that group um, how they felt about Oakwood and if they felt stress and they said they feel incredible stress to perform in Oakwood and because everyone is at the top and it is so public. Um, and they mentioned, I remember that they mentioned that the honor roll and Mrs. Owens might remember this as well. They mentioned that the honor roll being published in the paper was a huge stress for them. So when it came to our attention again, I thought, you know what, maybe that's worth it to circle back. So sorry for the long, for talking so much, but I wanted to kind of give you some context for why that came up and ask you, um, yes, Mrs. Owen says, yes, they and a couple of parents mentioned the stress. Asking if maybe we could consider looking at this practice and evaluate if the honor roll and how public it is, um, is harmful or be beneficial for our students. Emma, can you repeat that real quick? <laughs> repeat my question? I'm just, I'm messing with you, I'm kidding. Oh, I was gonna uh, repeat everything. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. No, I'm kidding you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we can. We we always look at that to be honest with you, and I and I get the um, what made Maddie run discussion, and that's something that's on our radar uh, for a lot of things because you know we we even you know we get questions. Well, should we do the college picture? Should we do the parade? Should we do um, graduation? Because what if you didn't graduate? Um, all those things that can make somebody feel less than if they're not included in the group. And so it's a tough thing because then you also have some kids are like, well, the only thing I've ever gotten is the honor roll. And I like to see my name in the newspaper and I'm not a, I don't get my picture in there for winning state swimming or something. So it, it's, it is a difficult thing. I do think it's something we got to keep uh, evaluating. Uh, and maybe see what other people think. Um, and also on the on the other side of it, we always have to keep reminding our kids to keep a healthy balance and realize that it's okay to celebrate other people when they're successful. And we're, we don't have to get every award. You know, there's also that side of it too. But also we don't want to make, yeah, we have so many kids on honor roll. It's almost like does that really, is that really something we should publish? Is that even a thing anymore? Um, so yes, I, I can see that argument. I also try to say, well, you know, we don't recognize a lot of academics here and that's one way we can do that. Um, most of our recognition goes to sports, you know, the arts, the performances, 
Um, so it's nice to have some academic awards to that too. But then anytime you do that, yes, you're kind of narrowing it down and then making other people maybe feel marginalized. So it's a tough one. I think it's worth looking at um, and seeing if that's something we should consider and maybe getting some feedback some, from some other parents and things like that as well. So, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly open to looking at it. Yeah, I would echo that on the junior high side that I've, I've heard a lot of students kind of joyful reactions when they realize they're on the honor roll for the first time. And, you know, having the background of working in the past primarily with students with disabilities that for a lot of students was something they were kind of striving for and a great accomplishment for them of like, well, I'm, I made it on the honor roll. It's my first time. Um, but I would agree that anytime we have a special recognition, it's special because it's, you know, not everybody does get it. And we're not looking to disincentivize or to single out people who haven't. Um, but even in the reason the honor roll would have come about, come about in the first place is, hey, you've achieved this honor and it's worth recognizing. Um, I would probably also agree that we we do have the awards next week where a component of that is students who've made the honor roll either the first three quarters of this year and or the first three quarters of this year and um, all or three quarters last year. Like that's a component of what we recognize. Um, but aside from that, you know, really it's just the day-to-day -day piece of we kind of count on that being self-rewarding for students. But for some kids kind of having that extra ability to earn their name outside the office where they, uh, we have companies that actually provide, uh, give certificates for students who make the honor roll. I think this year we had Arby's milkshakes, our taco, and one other that I'm forgetting in the moment where, you know, for students who make it on the honor roll, they get that one extra thing to kind of help incentivize it for them. Um, for students who get straight A's, the Reds send us vouchers for tickets. Um, and there would be ways that we can communicate with them individually and say, hey, you've earned this. But part of helping incentivize it for kids is kind of helping drive that behavior too of, well, that's something that I'm willing to work for. Um, but I think it is, it's always worth being sensitive to students who might, regardless of how hard they work, may have difficulty making it on the honor roll, which I think is kind of at the, at the root of the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Um, Antoinette, did you want, have something you wanted to say? Oh, we can't hear you. Oh. Did anyone else want to, while well, she's working on her audio, did anyone else have anything? Oh, are you, are you there? I'm here. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. My, my computer froze. And so I'm going to move because I have a, a child who's sick at home and he keeps, you know, I'm trying to talk while he's trying to <laughs> have me do things. Um, I understand that there is um, a lot of pressure for our kids and I agree that there is so it's such a, a line, you know, but it's, but I think in a way, you know, I, I have kids who are from opposite ends of the spectrum. I have children who are, are gifted in academically in sports. And I have like a child who's a special needs child who doesn't read and write. So, but at the same time, and this is us personally, we just know, Every accolade for them um, is based on another requirement or that is what it's based on. And what is more important is how that child feels about their accomplishments. Does that make sense? So whether it's in the paper or their friends come up to them, um, it's more important how that child feels about themselves, regardless of what social media says. Because I do think they get just overwhelmed. We do, right? Everybody does. Um, with what's information out there. But I think if we can teach them to say, well, what, what is important to you? Is it your friends who you know, not people you don't know, you know, not people who you've never met or had classes with? Um, so a lot of it is, um, you know, this world's really hard because they get a lot of information that they're not ready to filter through. But if we can just make the importance of, well, how do you feel about it? And if it if it's not helpful to you, then let's not use it. You know what I mean? Um, but that's just my opinion. You know, um, I'm sure everybody's in different situations and it's it's a very tough 
tough call, you know, because again, do you not mention the people who worked regardless of what the issue is, regardless of they can afford tutors while, you know, it's mom figuring out how to do multiplication the way they're doing it now, which is a no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I'm not in that department, <laughs> you know, that's not me. So, um, yeah, I just think if we stress on, well, how does, how does it make you feel? Is it, is it helpful for you? If it's not helpful, then put it away. You know, you don't need to deal with that. Yes. Just Thank you. That's a good point. Thank you so much. Anybody else have any thoughts or want to? Is there, is there a way that we could potentially survey the students or, and ask how they genuinely feel? Um, and parents, but definitely the kids, because that's what it, essentially that's who it's about, right? And uh, I'm not sure if there's a way that we can do that like we have done for other things, but I don't know, it's a thought because I'd be interested to see what they said as a group. Right, yeah, that's, that's a good point. I mean, they are the ones that are being recognized, right? So, yeah. Okay. Well, Mr. Badenhop, I think you're you're the only one on here, but the, the only administrator on here. So um yeah, I, as well as you know, well, we've done surveys in the past of students, and I think it's about, you know, do you get enough responses? we we never get a hundred percent of responses, you know, even on a day like we had the panorama survey yesterday, but we'll have students who were absent and then we'll chase them and we'll chase them, and then summer will hit and we, you know, we might miss a few in that respect. But that's always something we can add. It's just about making sure we get kind of a representative voice. And I would agree with, um, well, with what's been said a couple of times, like at some point there's that line of you want to, you want to have the good parts and not the bad parts. And it doesn't necessarily work that way that you can have one without the other, but it's definitely something worth looking into and continuing to evaluate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. As for the circling back questions, which I think are up next, yes. those probably are more outside my wheelhouse because I think the specific concerns, we have our junior high report cards on progress book. So that's the only way they're sent out the first three quarters of the year. And then we send paper copies home at the end of the year. Um, but I think the complication on the high school side was the CTC programs through Kettering and Centerville and what would not be included. Like the, the Oakwood part can be included, but it wouldn't necessarily reflect for everybody who's attending. Uh, one of those CTC programs or students who have different academic day setups, it might not work quite the same way. And integrating those, I, I don't know if there's an update on that or not. And for the AB Calc, I don't know the answer to that one either. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we'll follow up and we'll see. We'll see what Dr. Waller says about that. <clears throat> what, what about the progress book, the second semester cumulative average? Was that something that you were going to look into to see if we could do that? So when we did, yeah. And so when we were looking up the, I think the year to date averages that we were seeing like in the past had not worked, but I think when we kind of spot checked them, it looked like they were on the junior high side, but uh, I can still follow up with Matt Sprout on the, like, how do you, you want to, I guess you at least want to clearly communicate exactly what it's showing. And I think that was some of the concern that it didn't necessarily factor in the current quarter or the, okay, what does this mean for the rest of the year? How do you know where you stand, I guess, um, with what you need? Yeah, the question was, yeah, the year to date is accurate, but I think, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, Elizabeth, you might be able to help me articulate this but do you want do you want to say something elizabeth yeah so if you look at progress book um it has a year-to-date number which includes quarter one quarter two and quarter three right now and yeah and uh and what we're doing what they've done so far for quarter four i guess so the concern is for the high school kids for their gpa it really the year-to-date really isn't valuable a number we need a semester year to date so the kids know like if they got a high a the first two quarters and now they're getting a low b it's going to make it look like they could still get an a in the second semester but they won't they're going to get a b in the second semester and it's confusing i think the kids know that like i asked my kids and they're like yes we know what's wrong we know not to look at it but 
Do all kids, do all parents? It's just kind of confusing. Well, and would it be more helpful if there were a helpful thing and not a <laughs> not an unhelpful thing? And yeah, okay. I was gonna say just to delete the year to date if they can't add a semester. Uh, because the year to date is only valuable for the uh, you know, the first semester. Once okay. the first semester ends, the year to date is not valuable. Yeah. My apologies for that. I'll follow up with Matt Sprout, who's our technology person. And I could give you a thousand answers and none of them would be right when it comes to how Progress Book works on the back end. Uh, but I, I will um, check with him and then get back with you on that. Ultimately, that would be probably a high school decision in terms of whether to move that direction. But first, we need to see if it's available. And I would Thank imagine you. like we probably aren't the first school with the problem. Thank you. Right. Yeah, that'd be great. And I think I do think year to date so year to date is on the report card and so that is a little bit valuable i mean that's fine but this the second semester is also on the report card and like elizabeth said it we don't have that like right now we don't it's misleading because we need a way to kind of just start at the second semester and do a cumulative that way so you almost need both yeah, because the GPA is calculated off the semester grade, right? Yes, yeah. from a transcript standpoint, yes. Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, and the year to date, well, you're right, the year to date that's on there, I guess, is not accurate because the year to date, well, I don't know how the year to date is figured out. Mr. Bainhop, do you? I do, and it's different junior high and high school, but there's a formula for the junior high, it's three sevenths per quarter and one seventh for the final exam. If there is one in a class is the semester grade. So basically each quarter for the full year grade counts three fourteenths of your grade and the exams would be one fourteenth each. Um, but on the high school side, it's an easier calculation, which it emphasizes the exams a little bit more, but it's two fifths, two fifths, one fifth per semester with the exam being worth at one fifth. Um, and in some of our classes, all of our math classes, you earn credit per semester and semester classes, you earn credit per semester, but there are other classes that the credit is for the whole year. Like uh, I think the English classes, but what goes on the transcript is the semester average. So it's, it does get a little bit confusing. Maybe even for me, as I say it out loud, it does. It's like, well, why do we? Right, right. That way? But yeah. some, of, some of the background, they all used to be like whole year credits, but students disproportionately, if they didn't pass a class, it tended to be in the math department uh, because that's so like the thinking style there is so different from what works in the other content areas. And we found that students ended up needing to retake a whole year if, let's say, something happened and they had a really bad semester. Well, now it's set up so that they can have earned the first semester grade or can earn the second semester grade and might only need to retake the other missing half instead of the whole thing. Oh, I never knew why that was listed as two grades. Yeah, and we do. I mean, as you all know from having um, having children with lots of friends or in some cases your children themselves, like if a major thing happens or there's a mental health issue, you might have a semester where your attendance really drops, your grades really drop, and it's not really, you know, want to make it that if you had a bad month, now the whole year is in jeopardy. Um, but math has been the spot where it tends to be the stickiest grade wise. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think, I, yeah, the bottom line is if we could make progress reflect what will be, what is on the report card, that is what is, what is helpful at the end of the day. Right. So something helpful or nothing is what right. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, or just put, just don't do the year to day at all and just do, you know, each quarter. And then then the students can calculate it on their own or whatever. So, okay. Thank you. Well, so what should I do about getting the answers to the other things, Mr. Badenhop? Should I just send an email? I guess I can send an email. Yeah, I think that would be, that'd be fine. And then we can kind of communicate out from there. But the, I, I'm not sure on the AP calc. I can tell you we're having math seven, math eight, math seven honors and algebra. Yeah. <laughs> that's your that's your lane, right? <laughs> so, okay. Well, anything else before that's it for the agenda? Um, anything else before we wrap up? Okay, okay. Well, thanks for a great year, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.